Hi, friends. Welcome to Foggy Oak Fairy Tales, a stories podcast for all ages, where we tell farm stories from real life happenings on Foggy Oak Farm, as well as fantasy tales to spark both learning and imagination. I'm so glad you're here. This week, there's a hole in the neighborhood field, and it keeps getting deeper. Four kids decide to find out what's in the hole and find a prehistoric world full of dinosaurs and magic. They ride a T-Rex, help the Loch Ness Monster, and narrowly avoid a mistake that would have trapped them there. Join us on a fun adventure through time. One morning, the neighborhood kids woke up and there was a hole. At first, it wasn't a very big hole, but they noticed it there, there in the field, seeming like it was leading into the gentle slope of the hill next to it. No one had seen anyone digging, but the hole was there nonetheless, shallow looking, but wide enough for a child to squeeze into, if it had been deeper. That weekend, the neighborhood kids all gathered as if of one mind, next to the hole. Hey, Cassie, did you guys dig that hole when we weren't looking? One of the kids asked the tall eight-year-old standing to the side of the hole. No, I had nothing to do with it, Cassie responded. Do you guys think maybe it's gotten a little deeper, though? She asked, bending down a bit to peer into the hole. The others clustered closer. It did look a little bit deeper. Hey, somebody get in there. Let's see how far down it really goes, an eight-year-old named Toby suggested. Two five-year-olds stepped closer. I don't really want to get in there, Lila said. Me neither, Aurora, the other five-year-old, responded. Just then, All the children heard various parents calling them to dinner. Tomorrow, maybe, Cassie suggested as they all headed off in different directions to their homes. That night, the kids whose houses were near the hole noticed a strange glowing light emerging from its depths. It didn't go out. It didn't waver. It just shone like a beacon, calling to them. The next morning, As soon as they were up and breakfasted, all the neighborhood kids ran back to meet at the hole. I saw a light shining from it all night, one kid declared, looking nervously at the now not shining hole. Another child cautiously approached nearer and peered down. It's definitely deeper. I can't see the bottom anymore. As all the children came closer to assess the new depth of the hole, a faint light, not the bright beacon of the night before, but still definitely a light, began faintly shining up through the inky blackness of the hole. Okay, that definitely wasn't happening yesterday, Toby announced, looking around in amazement to his friends. Well, there's nothing else for it, Cassie responded. Obviously, we have to go check it out. She smiled mischievously at her friends. Twelve kids from the neighborhood in total had come out that morning, and it was decided that they would investigate in groups of four. Safety in numbers and all that. As two of the oldest kids, Toby and Cassie, were nominated to go first. Lila and Aurora, the five-year-olds, insisted on traveling with them. Toby, as the most curious, was happy to be first, while the other three prepared to follow behind him. There was some debate in the group about whether a parent should be told. But after all, it was just a hole. What could happen in a hole? Even a hole with a mysterious light coming out of it that was getting suspiciously deeper by the day. The four kids started to make their way down into the faintly glowing darkness of the hole. 
Once all four of them had made it in, they heard a strange voice that seemed to come from both everywhere and nowhere call out to them. Welcome, visitors. Do ye no harm to the creatures ye encounter, and no harm will come to thee? Go forth into adventure. As the voice faded into nothing, the four children, now the four adventurers, emerged into some kind of cave which glowed with the same strange light as the hole. The children saw a narrow opening beyond the main chamber, which created a small entrance just big enough for the kids to squeeze through. Nodding to one another, they followed Toby out into the sunlight and into a world unlike any they'd seen before. Lush, gigantic ferns grew all around them, with towering, large-leafed trees interspersed. In places, the sunlight was filtered with a greenish cast from the abundance of gigantic plant life all around them. And, more notably than the plant life, there were dinosaurs, and pterosaurs, and other prehistoric creatures. Everywhere. Every kind of dinosaur they had learned about, or wondered about, or heard of, regardless of time period or actual overlap, it seemed as though all they needed to do was think about a dinosaur for one to appear. Pterodons, dimorphodons, and more flew high above them, and around them, There were so many creatures, it was almost impossible to process them all. A stegosaurus herd with their strong, tall spikes lumbered by, trailed quietly by an interested-looking allosaurus. Smaller europarasauruses scuttled by, and immense apatosauruses grazed together in the distance, There were feathers, there were not feathers, there were colors, there were teeth. The dinosaurs and pterosaurs ranged in color and presentation in a magnificent variety of shapes, sizes, and features. Odd, but not yet afraid, the children looked around them in wonder, sharing astonished glances every so often as a new dinosaur wandered by. However, it didn't take long for the dinosaurs to notice them. At first, it was just quick looks as creatures wandered by, but slowly the animals began to slow down and appeared to very much be smelling them and looking them over. Uh, that voice said nothing would hurt us, right? Aurora asked in a worried voice. It did. Toby started to say more, but that was when the T-Rex showed up. It was indeed rather terrifying, if not exactly as they had imagined it. This T-Rex was lightly feathered, giant-eyed, and clearly a predator. It was followed, however, by a trail of fuzzy-looking, cute baby dinosaurs that the kids realized could only be baby T-Rexes. The grown-up T-Rex shambled up to the group of kids, followed by its own children, and leaned down close, inhaling deeply through its nose. Everyone was surprised when they heard it. Are you food? They heard it demand. You smell so different, but you do smell like food. We are not food, Cassie said, firmly putting up her hand. Yeah, we are not food, Lila and Aurora said in unison. Cassie and Toby both stepped forward in front of the five-year-olds, just in case. But as soon as the T-Rex leaned just a little bit closer to smell them again, a shield sprang up around the children out of nowhere. They could see through it, but it was definitely solid. The T-Rex 
yelped in surprise, and stumbled backwards, almost tripping over its babies. Clearly, it had gotten some kind of shock to its sensitive nose from the shield. Circling pterodons, who had been somewhat interested in coming lower to investigate the children, saw what had happened to the unfortunate T-Rex and quickly sailed back to higher altitudes. Everyone again heard that strange voice from the hole. No, no, creatures. You know perfectly well that the friends I bring here are not food. Apologize. And just like that, any sense of danger was over. I apologize, not food, the T-Rex declared, bowing its head to the children. Perhaps I can make amends. Would you care for a ride? What is it you would like to see? Well, if we're really safe... Toby muttered, looking up at the rather intimidating Tyrannosaurus Rex. You're really safe, the T-Rex said, sounding a bit defeated. I know better than to eat not food. In that case, Toby said, eyes lighting up as he looked at his friends, whose faces all lit up in the same way. Could you take us to see Nessie? Ah, everyone always wants to see Nessie, the T-Rex said to itself. Climb on my tail and I'll take you to her. Cautiously, the children clambered on to the lowered tail of the giant dinosaur. Once they were all aboard, the T-Rex carefully lifted its tail and set off. It was a bit hard to hang on to that tail as it swayed and bounced a bit with the T-Rex's movement, but they were all strong. Their legs and arms gripped the tail and they were able to stay on, even if it did feel a bit like riding a bucking bronco. As the T-Rex ran with them on its tail, they saw even more dinosaurs moving, flying, and crawling about. Hadrosaurs and brachiosaurs munched together. Velociraptors ran in packs, passing them on their hunt. The world was alight with life and creatures the children had only ever been able to imagine. After a bit, they came to a large lake. Nessie is always around here somewhere, the T-Rex said, lowering its tail. If you call to her, I'm sure she'll come. She loves the attention. Thanks, T-Rex, they said. Nessie! Nessie! They all cried out. From a bit down the shore, they heard, Ah, good! Finally, someone! I could really use some help here! The children ran down the shore until they came to a cove. This shallow part of the lake contained none other than Nessie, a giant, beautiful, and also rather intimidating plesiosaur. Hello, visitors, Nessie called to them. As you can see, I'm in a bit of a bind here. The children looked, and sure enough, a giant tree had fallen over the mouth of the cove. Nessie was stuck. The water is deep enough to keep me wet, but there's no food here, and I was just swimming around enjoying myself when this tree fell and trapped me here. Do you think you could help me get out? Of course, Nessie, we'll do what we can, Lila said reassuringly. Hmm, all right, so we are not strong enough to move this tree, but I bet we could ask for some help, Toby said. The children looked at the tall, strong-necked brachiosaurs grazing near the lake. Perfect, they said, smiling to one another. Brachiosaur, excuse me, brachiosaurs, Cassie said, walking up to the nearest group of them. Could you help us move a tree? You're so strong and tall, and you have such long necks. I think 
That's exactly what we need to help Nessie. Oh, um, Nessie's trapped in a cove, by the way, Cassie explained. The Brachiosaurus peered down at the group of children. Oh, visitors! They rumbled in happiness. Certainly we'll help you, since you are so nicely, man. The children led the Brachiosaurus back to the cove where Nessie was waiting. Nessie! One of the Brachiosaurus exclaimed, Why didn't you call to ask us for help? How long have you been stuck here? Not cool! Ach, I was embarrassed, Nessie responded, lowering her head. I didn't usually get caught like this. Well... We hope you'd do the same for us if we got stuck in the water, another Brachiosaurus said. Let's see what we can do about this, dudes. The group of them waded into the shallow water by part of the large tree. Yeah, this is groovy. No trouble, they muttered to themselves. And working together, they pushed their long necks under the branches of the fallen tree. Together, they pulled the tree away from the mouth of the cove, and as they pulled, they sang happily to one another to make the hard work more fun. Heave ho, heave ho, move this tree on one, two, three. Heave ho, heave ho, move this tree with me. In no time at all, the tree had moved away from the mouth of the cove enough that Nessie could slip by into deeper waters. Thank you, friends, Nessie said to the Brachiosaurs. I will not forget your kindness and visitors. Thank ye for helping me get assistance when I was too embarrassed to ask for it. In return for your kindness, perhaps you would like a tour of the lake on me back. Nessie looked at the children expectantly. There was no question about that. The children whooped in excitement and cried, yes! If a T-Rex's tail had been amazing, it was nothing to getting a tour of the giant lake from Nessie herself. Nessie moved closer back to the shore so that the children could climb up on her back. As they swam along, Nessie pointed out interesting sights to them. There by the shore, a cliff where some of the flying dinosaurs made their nests. There, a deep spot in the lake where Nessie found particularly delicious fish. There, a warm spot where Nessie liked to bask in the water on sunny days. Hey, Nessie, Aurora asked. Are you actually the same Nessie that lives in Loch Ness in Scotland? As a matter of fact... Nessie said, turning her head around on her long neck and giving them a sort of smile. It's me and many others. Not all the creatures can leave this world, but the plesiosaurs found a tunnel in the lake in the deepest part that happens to lead to your world. We didn't go there very often, and we tried to go only one at a time, but It is fun to pop over occasionally and surprise the tourists who are looking for us. If you go to Loch Ness in the future, do you call me and I'll pop over to say hello? Won't that be fine? Nessie chuckled to herself. Hey, um, is there food around here that we could have? Lila asked. I'm starting to get hungry and thirsty. The other children all nodded their agreement. They were too. Ah, there is, but if I were you, I wouldn't eat or drink while you're here. Sometimes all the rules didn't get told to visitors, and one is, if you eat or drink while you're here, you're gonna be stuck here for longer than I think you might wish to be. How long is that? Toby asked. Well, a few hundred years, give or take, until you complete some rather challenging quests, Nessie responded as she swam along. That doesn't sound good to me, Lila said emphatically. Who knows how long we've been gone anyway, Toby said. I think we probably ought to make our way back. That's probably a good idea, Nessie agreed. It was fun getting to show you the lake, and I certainly appreciate your help. I hope you'll come back to visit if you can. 
Oh, we definitely will, Aurora responded with a smile. Nessie took them back to the shore. The children all hugged her long neck before she swam back into deeper waters, bidding them goodbye and slipping beneath the surface to go look for fish. Nearby, some triceratops had been grazing, and they came over eagerly. Hey, want to ride back to the cave? A smaller, younger-looking triceratops inquired. Oh, we definitely would if you don't mind, Cassie said. We don't often get to see visitors. This will be an adventure, and we like adventures, the young Triceratops responded happily. It and three others walked over to the children and bade them climb up as they got themselves down a bit so that the children could climb on. Each kid climbed on to their Triceratops, and in no time at all, they were running with them through the lush ferns back towards the cave. When they arrived, the Triceratops lowered themselves and the children back down to the ground and said, Come back and visit sometime, and we'll take you to see our homes. Won't that be fun? Won't that be fun? We would very much like that, said Toby, smiling at the excited Triceratops. Reluctantly, the children said goodbye to the Triceratops, took one last look at the strange prehistoric world, and one by one slipped back into the cave. They made their way to the back, found the mouth of the hole that went gently upwards, and one by one began the climb up into their world. When they emerged, the sun hadn't moved much at all from its mid-morning position, and as soon as the last of them climbed all the way out of the hole, they saw a trail of eight other children coming up through the hole behind them. The three groups of friends all stared at one another in shock. And then, simultaneously, they exclaimed, You will never believe what happened! That's the end of the story for this week. Later on, we'll revisit our friends at the hole and find out what happened to the other two groups on their adventures. Thanks to my nephew Brody for requesting this story. He's turning eight this week. Happy birthday, Brody. I love you. Remember, you're part of the story, too. What did you think of this story? What did you imagine when you were listening? We'd love to hear your part of the story. If you and your grown-up want, you can share your thoughts or a picture you drew with our Foggy Oak podcast family. You might find it easiest to share with us on Facebook, at Foggy Oak Farm. But we have lots of options on our website, foggyoakfairytales.com. You can also check out pictures from the farm and learn more about us. Thanks for being part of the story, and I hope you'll join us next week. <laughs>